relive the glory days of stock car racing in Rolling Thunder, a Channel 7 special presentation. Brought to you by Glen Ray Radiator, Yax Body and Custom, Marshfield Super Speedway, and Kemp's Logging. Hi, I'm Bill Holland. Race fans in central Wisconsin have been cheering the thunder of their favorite cars and drivers for more than 30 years. This program gives us a chance to look back at the racers who've made the sport great. Stock car racing first became popular in the 1950s. The tracks were dirt, the cars stripped down hot rods, and the action was wild. It was dirt, of course, back then, and I had a 46 Ford, and that was in 1959, so it was quite an old car then already. We could, we could go to the service station and buy it, or give us a tire. We could run out here on that tire for a couple weeks. It was, it was very reasonable racing out here. When we first started, it was a pretty rough affair because I guess you say it was real unpolished. Um, nobody was professional yet, I guess, then, and the cars were older cars, and... Uh, it was pretty much, it was a rough, it was real rough, very rough. You had a hard time staying on the racetrack years ago. I think I won my first race on a call I didn't want to get caught up to. I started in the front and just left. <laughs> and they never did catch me. You didn't have the money, you know. People didn't have the money to spend on cars, you know. And if you had a $50 car, you could go racing. <laughs> it was that simple. There was tracks all over. I don't, I, I, I don't know if I ever counted how many tracks I was on, and they're all, well, when we started, we were all dirt. They were just, they were just in the cornfield. Uh, in fact, they don't, in fact, the one in uh, Rangeland, the cornfield was probably uh, 10 feet off the racetrack. <laughs> That's how all racing was, and rough. Herbie Kurth was one of the early champions, the first to make 99 a winning number. Most of the race cars from those days are long gone. Most, but not all. See the, um... There's hubs on the back. That wouldn't be too bad. I'll find them. Yep. The one in there, that's one of the first ones I had. If I, I built that in about 1950. The engine had a good engine. It just, I still got the engine, but I bought a new crank for it. Yeah, that's Sam Super Speedway. This, this car won, won almost all the races there. Really? Yeah. The 7 out of 9. Oh, this is a 38. That was a 37. I picked up on motor mounts. That's all I can tell Kirby's old race cars haven't turned a wheel in years. In fact, this one doesn't even have wheels anymore. But they bring back memories of days gone by and of drivers long since retired. Racers like Ken Pancraft of Mosinee. Oh yeah, he was hard to be so sure he was. He had to get some good cars. In fact, I stole that motor, he turned, he turned fast time the next day on me at Rossa here. I should have stolen a poor one. <laughs> Jerry Wagner, he was good. He was number 78, I think. He had an Oldsmobile Coupe. Yeah, he, he, he did good on the racetrack. Jimmy Ryan was a good racer, too. Kenny Pankratz, Augie Winkleman, uh, Trick will come in there. Uh, Marlon Wallback. That was down around here in Wausau, in this area here. Bill Caston is still a familiar face at the racetrack, only now he's behind the grill instead of the wheel. He recalls the old dirt track days with fond memories. Herbie Kurz was a fast driver. He was, uh, he drove a 35 Plymouth, and, uh, him and Jimmy Ryan, they both drove Plymouth. They were hard to beat. People came to see a show. They don't come to see a race. I remember that. <laughs> so we always had a show out here. And uh, you can see by the old pictures, the stands were always packed. And uh, we'd come at 12 o'clock. We'd start at 2, and we'd uh, put on a show for them. This is the old Griffith Park Speedway in Wisconsin Rapids. It's silent here now. The old bullring hasn't seen a race car in years. But in the late 50s and early 60s, Griffith Park was alive with excitement. Griffith Park was a, a, a fun track. That was an asphalt track. That's one of the first asphalt tracks around here. And, and the cars were uh, fairly modern there already. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was just fun. You get with the guys. and Back then, you could make a, a buck and have a beer afterwards. And, and uh, it, was, it was fun. It turned out we brought sport to it in the end. When we first came, we'd be in greasy dungarees and not dressed up very good. And finally, we started wearing white clothes and putting some sportsmanship in it and dry, drawing real good crowds. There was eight races here that summer because we got a late start. They just built the track, and I won seven of them features out of the eight with that flathead. 
and Tommy Refner rolled me over, I'd had the eighth one. <laughs> Not far from the old racetrack sits one of Jerry's race cars, a throwback to another time when the sport was young, and the brave men who raced these old coupes started history. Jack Dolphy, when he built this car, <clears throat> this is probably, a, I demolished one for him at the Marshfield, and uh, then he came back with this car. And he probably built this like in a week's time or two weeks time, you know, to get me back on the track. You won't see this old war horse back on the track anymore, but don't think its driver wouldn't like to get back behind the wheel one last time. My hands, I can never remember my hands ever sweating when I drove, but when I'm watching the race, I'm driving harder than, especially if I like some guy out there. And I'm behind him, my hands are so sweaty that, uh, no, it's, it's hard on me. Once that bug gets you, I mean, you're, you're just done. You're just, that's all you want to do is race, you know. And the men who raced in the 60s took the sport to a new level. When we come back, a look at a very special age for stock car racing. Hey, race fans. It doesn't matter if a car is flying around the oval or driving down 51. You want to make sure your car is in peak running condition. So now is a good time to stop by Glenray Radiator for your fall radiator checkup. Just as racing has changed over the years, so has Glenray. We have worked hard to keep up with our customers' needs, and we have expanded so we can service more people at one time, along with the purchase of an ultrasonic cleaner to keep your radiator in tip-top form. Glenray Radiator, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder, North 6th Street, Wausau. You won't do better than your wheel painting. Land, our most valuable resource. If you want to make the most out of your property, then it's time to call Kemp's Logging in Nakusa. At Kemp's Logging, we'll take care of clearing mature timber from your property, which can add up to extra dollars for you. We'll take care of the cutting and the scaling of logs on your property. You take care of the profit. Plus, at Kemp's Logging, we're fully bonded and have 14 years of experience in the logging industry. So if you want to make some extra money, then we have the clear-cut answer. Kemp's Logging, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder. It's the Carquest and Wolfhead Late Model Invitational. Friday and Saturday at Marshfield Super Speedway. 30 last Late Model Features. Plus Model 5. Super Star. Street Star. $2,000 to win the Late Model. Club Night, Friday, compliments of Carquest. Plus motorcycle races. Hot laps at 7. Races at 8 on Friday night. $2 discount coupons for Saturday night available at all Carquest stores. If it rains Friday, complete show Saturday. Green Day for Saturday and Sunday. The Late Model Invitational at Marshfield Super Speedway. Three and a half miles west of Marshfield on 8. Sponsored by Carquest and Wolfhead Motor Oil. Run with the Wolf. week is ending. We're just getting started. There's only one place to turn to for real news on the weekend, and that's News 7. You'll find experienced journalists who know and care about North Central Wisconsin. You can bet your bottom dollar that if news is breaking on the weekend, News 7 will be there to bring the news home to you. News 7. North Central Wisconsin's choice for weekend news. This is Golden Sand Speedway near Plover. It opened in the 1960s and in a sense is a second generation racetrack. Drivers say things started to change about the time this racetrack opened. This was a super speedway to us, you know, after... Before this, there was a quarter miles and uh, some they call quarter miles. It was even less than a quarter mile. And uh, this here was fast. This was... Uh, uh, put a lot of guys to the test. The cars were pretty much stock except well, you know, as years went by, they kept sticking stuff in them and getting faster and faster. Those cars and the men who drove them raced into history. Their respect for each other grew over the years and lasts to this day. Marlon Walbeck of Rib Lake. I ran seven times a week for quite a few years, and there was other tracks I could have went to, too, at the same time, but I just didn't have that much time. I ran 
um, twice on Sunday, and um, I had Monday night off. So I was home Monday night, and when I was home, I was working on a race car. Wahlbeck was the best for a long time. I mean, none of us guys could touch him. Uh, when he had Mogi Dahl with him and some of those guys, uh, Bern Egan, he had a good crew, and he was a real good driver. When we started, uh, it was Marlon Wahlbeck racetrack. <laughs> he, did, he, he ruled the racetrack, uh, like Stratford, uh, 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 Griffith Park, uh, he was ahead of the ball game. For a time, Walbeck's chief rival was Wisconsin Rapids ace Dick Trickle, whose familiar number 99 Fords made many a trip with the winner's checkered flag. It was rivalry on the racetrack, hard racing, good racing, but in the pits, uh, it was just like friends and everybody could share with everybody else. Trickle would become the biggest name in Wisconsin stock car racing. I knew right away, he's, he's going to take a few years, he was going to be good. And he, he just kept climbing up and he, he, done, he done real good. And about the time I retired, that's the time he took over the top spot. He used to get in my car when he wasn't old enough to even be out there and ask if he could drive it around. And he, sometimes he didn't ask. So we put up with him and he turned out real good. Dick and I started together. Uh, I guess I started maybe a year before he did. And, and uh, but we raced for a lot of years. We raced like door to door for 20 years and uh, or even 25 years. And uh, he was a great guy to race. Trickle would set a record for the most feature wins in a season. Rudolph's Tom Refner would break that mark in his familiar number 88. Tom is another one. He can get the cars working good. He knows how to how to get it working. If the car ain't right or something, he knows how to do it. And he's got a lot of experience. He's been doing it doing it for years. Tom is one of them guys that just never wear out, I guess. He and Trickle, they started about the same time. Tom and I raced together for years. We had a lot of fun. Not many differences, a lot of fun. While Refner is known for his consistency behind the wheel, Jim Baca Vesper is remembered as both a tough competitor and a crowd pleaser. He was hard to beat because you never knew what he was going to do. He was a type of driver that sometimes I wonder if he knew what he was going to do. You know, he was, he was there to win and that's what he did. Yeah, he was a good, he was a good, well, a crowd pleaser too. People liked him. When Jim was hot, Jim had the car set up right, he would go and nobody could touch that guy. And the next week, he'd probably change something on the car and he'd be in the semi-feature. I'd never seen a guy could be, had so many highs and so many lows, but when he had that car right, he, he could, he'd set a record and he'd go like mad. Jim was a good runner, real good. He dominated a year or two there where nobody would touch him, I think. 73, uh, I think, he was the guy to beat. The circuit here uh, in the central Wisconsin was one of the toughest, fastest ones in the country. On many occasions, Nakusa's Marv Marzovka would be the man to beat. Like many of these drivers, Marzovka began his racing career on the old bull rings and drove into the 80s. Marv is a good, smooth driver, very clean. The kind of guy you could run alongside of all day and no problem, and uh, he was a good driver. What kind of racer was he when he was behind the wheel? Marv was one of the best. We had Larry Deachins, Marv Marzovka, Jim Bach, myself, and Dick Trickle. Uh, any of us could win. It depended on whose car was the best. Late 60s and 70s is when we could race uh, six nights a week and twice on Sunday. Uh, that was some of the best racing around. Uh, very competitive. Uh, they were like it was like 10 cars and any one of them could win. So competitive that the big names were always challenged. Sonny Immerfall of Marshfield spent 30 years racing and beating the best the sport had to offer. There was a lot of good drivers. A lot of them. Back in the 70s when, when Trek was running here in the early 70s, we had oil. We had, I think we had the best drivers now. But could Wisconsin's finest compete against the best stock car drivers in the world? The answer when we come back. Land, our most valuable resource. If you want to make the most out of your property, then it's time to call Kemp's Logging in Nakusa. At Kemp's Logging, we'll take care of clearing mature timber from your property, which can add up to extra dollars for you. We'll take care of the cutting and the scaling of logs on your property. You take care of the profit. Plus, at Kemp's Logging, we're fully bonded and have 14 years of experience in the logging industry. So if you want to make some extra money, then we have the clear-cut answer. Kemp's Logging, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder. Drinking eggs for cars 
must and can. You know that we can. We make them look like new. So all you have to do is call your body and custom. You won't do better than your. Hey race fans, it doesn't matter if a car is flying around the oval or driving down 51. You want to make sure your car is in peak running condition. So now is a good time to stop by Glenray Radiator for your fall radiator checkup. Just as racing has changed over the years, so has Glenray. We have worked hard to keep up with our customers' needs and we have expanded so we can service more people at one time along with the purchase of an ultrasonic cleaner to keep your radiator in tip-top form. Glenray Radiator, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder, North 6th Street, Wausau. It's the Carquest and Wolfsand Late Model Invitational. Friday and Saturday at Marshfield Super Speedway. 30 last late model features. Plus model 5. Super Star. Street Star. $2,000 to win the late model. Club night, Friday, compliments of Carquest. Plus motorcycle races. Hot laps at 7. Races at 8 on Friday night. $2 discount coupons for Saturday night available at all Carquest stores. If it rains Friday, complete show Saturday. Green day for Saturday is Sunday. The late model Invitational at Marshfield Super Speedway. Three and a half miles west of Marshfield on 8. Sponsored by Carquest and Wolfsand Motor Oil. Run with the wolf. Hard-hitting, on-location, in-depth coverage. It's time for Track in the Pack, a Channel 7 sports exclusive. The virtual reality of sports reporting that puts the fan on the sidelines and then takes you behind the scenes. It's your chance to get the inside track on Packer information. Find out what the coaches are thinking and how the players are doing. In front, up close every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday during Sports 7. the big league of stock car racing, NASCAR Winston Cup. Big money, big tracks, big pressure. Only the best need apply. There goes the 71, down on the inside. Dave Marcus pulling up, going after John Andretti next. Dave Marcus has run more Winston Cup races than any active driver. 30 years ago, he was a front runner on the central Wisconsin short tracks. But in the late 60s, he moved south. Just start racing at State Park Speedway. Uh, didn't know uh, how long I would do it or if I'd even like it or what. I just I started it and enjoyed it and continued on with it. And uh, after I won most everything there was to win uh, here in Stratford and the Dells and La Crosse and those places, Tomahawk, I felt like if I was going to continue to do it for a living, uh, the place to do it would be in NASCAR. Marcus has won five NASCAR races, but racing at this level is tough and expensive. And for most of his career, Marcus has gone against the high dollar teams as an independent. He's respected on the circuit and here at home. I really gave him credit when he left and went dedicated his life to race. He made a good decision to go south and race a little bit bigger uh, races. And, and uh, that was the way to do it. He's moved on and, and it probably has been the most successful uh, private individual in the NASCAR scene. He never did have the money to back him and so forth, and uh, and he's still there. And a lot of the fellows have come and gone over the years, and, and Dave is still there, and, and we're pretty proud of him, very proud of him. In the 70s and 80s, Dick Trickle won just about everything there was to win on the Midwestern short tracks. The White Knight raced to win, and win he did. Just being ready and, and just having everything just right. I'm fairly comfortable with what I'm doing. I enjoy it. Uh, the big circuit, as you say, is a financial situation, and I'm not capable of the financing it takes. So uh, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing. In 1989, Dick Trickle became NASCAR's Rookie of the Year at an age when many drivers think about retirement. In 1992, he drove this car to fourth place in the Daytona 500. Ever think guys like Trickle and Marcus to be where they are today? Well, I kind of figured Trickle would because he, uh, he had it, and Davey, well, Davey was a good driver, too. Dick was a very confident about what he was doing, and a lot of people called him cocky. Uh, uh, really, he was confident, and, and he showed that confidence and, uh, by what he's doing today. Is Dick Trickle a great race driver? Well, he was. Uh, he came into our series 20 years ago with such a reputation that, uh, you know, you really expected a lot from him. In those days, Trickle was the master, a role model for young up-and-coming drivers like Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace to learn from. 
At about that same time, a young Illinois driver made an important move. Ted Musgrave, you know, is very interesting. He was born in Evanston, Illinois, and his dad, Elmer Musgrave, was a race driver, so he's a second-generation race driver. Ted decided to move up to the Adams Friendship area to learn racing where he could race five or six nights a week, learn from people like Dick Treckle. Musgrave learned to race and learned to win. Today, he's one of the young lions in Winston Cup racing. Very, a very skillful person, and he's got a lot of ability and so forth, and he wasn't really able to express that ability uh, here with the financial backing he had, and whenever he moved down south and got the financial backing, he's able to, to show that skill. There are new faces on the Wisconsin short tracks today, carrying on this area's racing tradition. When we come back, we'll meet the men racing into a new era, and drivers pay tribute to former champions who lost their lives on the racetrack. You won't do better than yours, we do painting. Stringing for car trucks and vans, you know that we can. We make them look like new, so all you have to do is call your body and custom. Land, our most valuable resource. If you want to make the most out of your property, then it's time to call Kemp's Logging in Nakusa. At Kemp's Logging, we'll take care of clearing mature timber from your property, which can add up to extra dollars for you. We'll take care of the cutting and the scaling of logs on your property. You take care of the profit. Plus, at Kemp's Logging, we're fully bonded and have 14 years of experience in the logging industry. So if you want to make some extra money, then we have the clear-cut answer. Kemp's Logging, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder. Hey, race fans, it doesn't matter if a car is flying around the oval or driving down 51. You want to make sure your car is in peak running condition. So now is a good time to stop by Glenray Radiator for your fall radiator checkup. Just as racing has changed over the years, so has Glenray. We have worked hard to keep up with our customers' needs, and we have expanded so we can service more people at one time, along with the purchase of an ultrasonic cleaner to keep your radiator in tip-top form. Glenray Radiator, a proud sponsor of Rolling Thunder, North 6th Street, Wausau. It's the Carquest and Wolfhead Late Model Invitational. Friday is Saturday at Marshfield Super Speedway. 30 last Late Model features. Plus Model 5. Superstar. Street Star. $2,000 to win the Late Model. Fuck night. Friday, compliments of Carquest. Plus motorcycle races. Hot laps at 7. Races at 8 on Friday night. $2 discount coupons for Saturday night available at all Carquest stores. If it rains Friday, complete show Saturday. Green day for Saturday is Sunday. The Late Model Invitational at Marshfield Super Speedway. Three and a half miles west of Marshfield on 8. Sponsored by Carquest and Wolfhead Motor Oil. Run with the Wolf. Hi, I'm Larry McCarron. Start off your Packer game day by watching Sunday pregame. Every week, John Mino and myself will preview the upcoming opponent and show you what to watch for. It's your own personal scouting report. We'll give you the big picture and then go to the coach himself for the last word. And that's the type of game it's going to be as I see it. Get ahead of the game and grab a front row seat every week for Sunday pregame. It takes courage to strap on a helmet and get behind the wheel of a race car. Anyone who spends any time around the sport knows that racing can be a dangerous game. Sadly, two of this area's greatest champions lost their lives at an age far too young. Lyle Nabafelt was one of the early champions, winning many races in his famed black X car. In later years, he raced a coupe against the late models. Nabafelt lost his life in a qualifying crash in 1973. It was an awful shock at the time. It's, uh, it was an awful shock. After we found out he got killed, then they took a special collection up for him. And all the drivers were standing out there. And I, myself, personally, I felt like I was standing out for myself. It was just like I was all alone. Because uh, we were very good friends, real good friends. I got to be careful when I think about Lyle. <laughs> Start getting emotional. He'd have been still racing if he was around, I know that. Think people forget how good a racer he was? No, I don't think they forget. Wausau's Larry Deachins was one of the top drivers in the Midwest when he died in a crash in 1981. Many believe Deachins had the talent to go much further. I know he would have gone a long way. He had the skill, he had the connections, and a uh, terrible thing. He was a very talented person in many other ways than just driving a race car, but you know, it was really his season in 80, and especially in 81, he was really strong that year. Uh, he was a really neat guy, and we really miss him. 
he taught me one thing is was respecting the other guy and uh, it always stuck with me and uh, it does mean so much Larry set the standard for racing around here he was what I would consider you know a first-class act all the way Larry Deachins is gone but his familiar number 25 is not Scott Wimmer is Deachins nephew he carries the number as a tribute this is my uncle's number and as long as I've been around racing and everything I've this was the number I remembered the most and I always envied my uncle you know he's probably my biggest hero and uh, I just thought I'd try to carry his name on Scott Wimmer is part of a new generation of racers hard drivers out to make their mark I'm a totally competitive person I guess and anytime I can get out there with 14 other guys and run door to door I guess that's what I live for. The speed is probably the the most exciting part of the being in a race car is is going through the corners so fast and, and feeling the side force and the, the fight to hold yourself straight in the car and then the adrenaline's pumping because you you're racing so close and so fast to so many other cars. I'd like to do it for a living, you know, and it's just you got to keep plugging away around here until you do good enough to make it or hope somebody notices you. Gary Bach is a second generation race driver. He doesn't carry his father's number, but he is carrying on the tradition. It certainly is something I'm proud of. Uh, real, you know, I like to carry on what, what basically my dad was doing and it makes me feel good. It makes me feel proud, you know, and and of course, you know, I'm proud of him, and, uh, and uh, the last my boy that uh, makes cars, and, and uh, it's real great. Tom Refner is a link between the past and present. He's still racing. He's still winning. Some of these guys are 30 years younger than you are. Yeah, well, they're pretty good, too. <laughs> when I can run side by side with Tom, it's, it's just a great feeling knowing that he's one of the great Wisconsin legends. And being able to race with them is just a, a super feeling, knowing that you're like one of them guys. To race with a man like Tom, you'll learn something every time you race with him. One can also learn from Lyle Nowak. The driver of the black number 32 races as hard as anyone, even though he drives with only one hand. It is a little bit harder for me to control the car and to steer it when it gets in a slide or gets out of control. So that's why everyone on my race team works really hard to try and make the car handle just that much better. And when the car is working really well, my mom can drive it. Wayne Ludholz is racing in his 25th season. He's won championships, he's won prize money, but that's not his motivation. It's more of just the point of being able to, to do your best, you know. Uh, I mean, there's guys out here that have never won a championship, been racing a lot of years, and uh, but they're having fun, and that's, that's what it's all about. Bob Mackesy of Rib Mountain loves the sport enough to race for 27 years. He big trick old Ted Musgrave, Mark Martin, uh, Rusty come up to us a couple times, and I raced against Bobby Allison, all the Dells, and, and it was a lot of fun, you know, to race with those guys, and for my boys, probably won't have a chance to race with those uh, Winston Cup guys. Will the drivers of tomorrow live up to the standards set by the men who've raced here over the past three decades? That's hard to say, but if they take to the track with the fury and flair of the drivers who set the standard here, the sport will be in fine shape. I'm Bill Allen. Thanks for watching. Thunder is a special presentation of WSAW Television, Channel 7. Brought to you by Glen Ray Radiator, Yacht Body and Custom, Marshfield Super Speedway, and Kemp's Logging. Here they come! There's thunder in the valley!
Chevrolet. This is the 25th anniversary of the Chevrolet World Championship Off-Road Race in Grandin. This Labor Day weekend, all the top drivers will be there. Jack Flattery, Flattery. Walker Evans, Evans. Scotty Taylor. Taylor. Over 350 entries. Don't miss it. Racing starts at 10 a.m. each day at the Chevrolet World Championship Off-Road Race, 25th anniversary celebration at Grandin Labor Day. There's thunder in the valley.